Hello everyone, this is Richard Cespedes and we're here to play Bucky O'Hare from Konami. Released back in 1992 on the NES system, Nintendo Entertainment System. This game was a real fun, challenging, um, groundbreaking game when I played it as a kid. It was really a lot of fun. Um, I didn't know anything about this, uh, the franchise specifically other than seeing the toys and stumbling upon it um, in Showtime Video and renting the game. Um, I didn't know that there was an actual cartoon franchise happening in Saturday mornings. I don't know which channel it was on, but uh, um, as time passed, now I know that it was actually a kind of a big franchise and it was going on for quite a while. But all I knew was just the Bucky O'Hare, as you can see there, the green character, that's the main character. I saw the toys, but I did not know that there was a cartoon. And um, I didn't know until a few months back, looking for emulators for the, for the arcade, <clears throat> and looking for just uh, arcade game ROMs, um, I saw there was a Bucky O'Hare arcade game. And I didn't know that they had that. And actually, the game is actually pretty damn good. It's pretty fun, pretty challenging. It would take up a lot of your quarters. You know, not too easy. And uh, here we go. We're going to play the game. Green Planet. And as you can see, it's classic. Classic, 8-bit, uh, beautiful goodness. And those little robotic um, enemies on the walls. Those kind of remind me of, uh, of Contra, the game, but also for NES, which is uh, another game that was another challenging game <clears throat> that was like you took one hit and you died, but as a kid I still managed to pass a lot of levels and get close to the end. Um, the thing is though, a lot of people don't understand is that like uh, as a kid back in the 90s when you're playing these games, it was just so much, um, it was just more than what was needed, it was more. Like right here specifically, right here we have a dawn, it's gonna be nighttime. You see that transition from purple to black right there, those lines? That's just beautiful, that beautiful transition, and now we're at night. That beautiful 8-bit background in this game just reminds me, you know, of uh, Little Nemo Dream Master. I don't know which level it was on. But it's that one level where you're on top of the, the buildings and there's clouds and there's a moon and all that. And like those stars and sparkling stars. It's just back then it was just more than words can say. It was very beautiful and it, it, it uh, made you use your imagination in terms of what the creators were trying to portray and trying to provoke emotion out of you. You know, so it was really. The games back then were really something to behold. I mean, they were groundbreaking back then. There was nothing like that uh, in the 60s and in the 70s, except for some arcades. And in the 80s, that's when games became big, and Nintendo was uh, was uh, revered and released. And um, and the water, like the water motion, kind of reminds me of uh, Batman Returns of the Return of the Joker. Batman utilized a lot of those the sewer levels, which are close to the end, where he's gonna go fight the Joker. The water motion, really great. Crystal clear water motion in the nighttime, beautiful background, beautiful eight-bit starlight background. And here I am falling. This part right here I remember very fondly. <clears throat> this is awesome, this is an awesome, awesome game. boss. <clears throat> this guy, um, one thing I want to add is that, like, uh, those big boulders that he grabs, like, right here. That big-ass boulder. Back then, there was nothing like that in the 8-bit round. Was, the graphics were just very groundbreaking. 
There was nothing, nothing like that. Kind of similar to like back in the mid 2000s when in film, people thought that there was no such thing as like these large, huge uh, CGI bad guys, or I think it's not movies, but like for like video games. There was no such thing as the main character hero fighting these huge bad guys. You know, and uh, and I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, Devil May Cry that introduced huge bad guys that you would fight against. And that was the first time that they utilized huge bosses, huge mind-blowing bosses ever in video game history to be used in terms of such complex um, battles against the main character of Devil May Cry. And this was a forerunner of that, big old boulders, and later on, and I think it's this level, you're gonna see these big old huge worms. Boom. <clears throat> got that, got that. Right now I'm looking for something, I think it's still there. Ah, there it is. One thing that I always liked was, um, little robot character, and he's blinking. See, that's it right there. That right there, that's pretty damn big for 8-bit world. You know, that's, a, that's that's pushing the NES to its limits with these worms. That blew everybody away back then, believe it or not. But uh, again, Blinky kind of reminds me of my uh, imaginary um, robot Minus that I talk a lot about my in my videos uh, a few times. That I want to create with enough money, maybe I will create it with enough flow motion, arm motion, and flow motion, and walkability, and all that, and just to create this robot as cute as Blinky in this game, he's just a cute little robot in this game, and that's what I want, and uh, you can check it out in um, <clears throat> my math tutorials in the playlist section, and it's near the bottom of it, and you'll see uh, my virtual sphere, talking about the virtual sphere, and movies, and other technology that I'm thinking about, nanotechnology, and of course minus the Android. A little more detail. Then this type of level design was very complex. Look at the motion of those pumps or those smashing machines. Those smashers. Very fast motion, especially for like leaving you. Near the end of the NES reign, close to the mid or early 90s, the NES, uh, the video game developers pushed the NES to its finite limit to its limits trying to push it and try to get it to be as uh, um, up to date and sharp and fun as the NES system itself the Sega Genesis the last game to me when I was a kid and look at that green liquid, liquid right there that's just such great motion such great it invokes your imagination as to like how they did that and like it just amazed you and it was just just the simplicity of that motion you know, just great animation great design great color hard to explain how it was back then as a kid experiencing this <clears throat> oh 
but also the video games back then um to me the final game that was like the final nail in the coffin for the reign of NES system was probably the Mega Man. I think it was seven or five. I don't know how how many Mega Man's there was for the NES, but it was the last one. And it was around that time that I was very I was starting to become aware of um, the systems, being more aware of uh, the commercials, the commercialization. Of them. And to me, the Mega Man, which was probably like in 1992 or something like that, 1993. Mega Man 7 or 5 was like the final nail of the coffin for like how far they can push the NES. And that was like basically like even as a kid that was like the end for the NES. Because Super NES and Sega was just dominating everybody's wallets to buy, buy, buy their products. of Mega Man, one of the levels where like, the light beams are coming from both sides. It's kind of similar to that. Very ingenious. Right here too, right? look at those right here. Those flames flying over. That is just amazing. Amazing. Amazing graphics for, for, for such a bit system to be able to create that type of animation. Um, there was nothing like it, you know? I mean, like I said, this game was very groundbreaking. It was like the surface of the sun, basically. This is a very creative level, too. background is moving like that right here it is like there was nothing like that you know the regular Super Mario games the first one didn't have that complexity of like depth of having the background shift and change as you walk in the foreground showing depth this was a you know NES um, really was a forerunner of all games you know the grandpa of all to come that's what the NES was for all video game systems in the future. <clears throat> the pioneer, if you will. This is something I remember very vividly. The green boulder. It's very strange how they land, they sit on it, but they don't fall off. We're gonna fight that boulder right there. <clears throat> it's 
got this blast him, just got blast blast him. I'm gonna die fast. Oh, there you go. Dead eye, here's a toll blaster, which I just lit it from the toad arsenal. It was no problem zipping around in this toad rocket pack. <clears throat> Zoom right over the toad walls. Password. Now we're gonna go to the big plant, the yellow plant. See, that's her power. Just like how mine is gonna be. Shower or asteroid or whatever you call it. So I'm not talking too much, I'm just trying to get through this game. <clears throat> I haven't played it for a long time, kind of rusty. Speed, that's a lot of speed. That just shows what Ennis can do. Watch out for the spikes. Boss, the 
big old damn machine. And that power of hers will do very well and really, it really will defeat this machine. And other bosses that will be coming up in this game. And he's gone. No, it's a trick. Which the toad set to capture Bucky O'Hare. This is where you have to re um save all over again the boy, uh Dead Eye, and the girl. You and um, Bucky and Blinky are the only ones that are, that are there and are able to save them. So now we're in the Toad ship, Mother ship, we have to escape and we have to save those three characters all over again. This level's not too difficult, it's just a little bit uh, cramped because it's supposed to be, you know, prison location level. You have those zappers there, you have to use the little blinky character, aka Future Minus of mine, um, to uh, break those purple bricks. Walls. Fight this girl character again. She's gonna get possessed by the Captain Toad or whatever the hell his name is. Or that his name. Because she gets hypnotized. <clears throat> and have to um, knock some sense into her with her bullets to bring her back to normal and get her back in her crew. It's not too difficult. And right there in that corner to the right, the bottom right, you're able to hide there and kind of shoot through the wall and the attacker just duck, see how the lasers are passing over Bucky's head? That's a really good technique. She's gonna be done for a while. She's gonna be done real fast. Just a moment. And there she is, flashing. Now she's gonna return back to normal. I've lost myself in a hypnotic beam. I keep going and going. The level's not over yet. You see, you got those purple bricks. There's a lot of them. And in classic 8-bit world, they return back.
you know, those things really remind me of Contra. And here we are, right here, we're gonna collect the second hero, and as soon as we step in the threshold, he's gonna try, try well, there he goes, the hypnotic beam, I guess at first cold. And that Captain Toe looked cramped in his little hovering device. And that was fast. We used the girl's special power to take him back. Thank you, Data may be caught at the top. And you have plenty of life and you're able to find more life. Okay, we're just going and going and going. We gotta find Dead Eye, the little duck that looks like Daffy Duck. Uh, let's say a knockoff. And those switching bricks are very ingenious to give more complex and difficulty to the game and the levels of the game itself. Which is a very similar to a lot of other games. And see there you gotta like Pace yourself at the right moment. <clears throat> and in real life, the design of this room with the spikes and everything would be kind of like insane, you know, be kind of like surreal a little bit. Like in real life, it just wouldn't work. But in the video game world, against bad guys against the heroes, it, it works perfectly. This also reminds me of Spike, Spear Spikes. It reminds me of Mega Man for some reason. Well, Mega Man had to fight through the, the walls, bust through them with his uh, booster cannon. We're gonna get to Dead Eye very, very soon. And he's not too difficult, not too hard, not too hard. The little sphere power of hers can knock him some sense into. And there he is, flashing back him. The hypnotic spell is broken. Phew. Is... Is all alright? Is everyone all... Is... You know, everybody's alright? It doesn't really make sense because it says like... Everyone is alright! I think that what they meant to say, or to type in there was, is everyone alright? You know, they forgot to put is in the front of everyone, everybody. Jenny, Captain, what shall we do? But, 
We have to escape, Jenny. Now! Jenny, now! Willie, well, where are we now? That's his name, Willie the Little Boy? Huh. Blinky. I calculate we are near the core of the magma tanker. Bucky. Let's follow the salvage chute down to the center. Then we can blow their tanks. Did I? Yo, Bucky. Let's ionize the slime eating toadies. This level is just very basic, but it's straight to the point. This is the final level, so to speak, before we have to fight um, the Captain Toad. Very ingeniously designed, but back then very difficult, very challenging, as you can see. See this part right here for the 8-bit world, those kind of like those bugs popping out of there. Now that's awesome graphics right there. There's nothing like it. There was nothing like it before. Weird slugs right there. They don't kill you, they just slow you down, which is a, a very um, novel technique that a lot of video games use even now. To have um, enemies that don't kill you but just slow you down and make you bump into the um, hazardous terrain that's in the level. And see, that's his special move is to climb on the wall. That's Deadeye's special move to climb on the walls. water and classic blackout flash room classic classic a lot of games in the past in the 8-bit realm even in the NES realm that you you've utilized that technique to bring difficulty to levels there we go again very cool um, enemy design, the worm thing sticking out, and especially the background, see that worm back there, kind of throbbing, awesome design, awesome. You're done. Mm -hmm. 
Then this is the core, Captain. The magma is stored here. We've got to blow this two-bit tanker, guys. Very, very close near the end of this awesome game. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to get through the game. It's being a little bit quiet, but let's stay focused. See that those monitors that you saw earlier, um, they kind of remind me of uh, the first Batman that utilized um, that kind of graphic to like have the Joker kind of yell at you, you know, near the end of the Batman for the NES, the first NES that uh, released Batman the movie in the movie, and that kind of reminds me of that. It's real cool.
very interesting level. <clears throat> you go over it, that's how you pass it. See now, right here is the ingeniousness of the level designers. This part right here, this sphere rotating around. That that design of like uh, difficulty that they just you know very ingenious on their part. I think it took just one person, one genius, to come up with that concept and design. They are again those big old worms. Here we are, the boss. <clears throat> this guy is not too, too hard. You just have to shoot him in specific places. You see right there, that part broke off. Very, very easy. <clears throat> you break the glass. Just that glass. The element of the glass breaking in 8-bit worlds is just so cool. Done. This right here, right, I remember distinctively. <clears throat> On top of this hovercraft, or this little jet powered craft, to uh, blow you across and get you out of this, 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 uh, about to explode toad spaceship. Super Mario pipes. As a kid, this was a very difficult level. And here's the mini 
boss before the main boss. Not too difficult, just a little tricky to find what, where to attack it. in a ship. These types of bosses, which is like a, a ship boss, is very similar to a lot of other NES games that came out back in the day. You have to shoot these ship bosses in specific areas. almost down for the count. Shots back there. And he's done. Awesome boss though. Here's the main last boss, Toad Cap, whatever his name is. You can tell there's a wall of fire indicating that the spaceship is exploding and that they're fighting as they're trying to escape both. I remember, I remember fighting him vividly and just being so excited and nervous to just not die and just to beat him and beat the game very exciting a battle as a kid
dead. It was kind of like, um, not really that big of a defeat. You know, like this one little... <laughs> and he's dead, gone forever. Buck your hair and his bold crew disable the toad mothership and escape with their lives. The righteous probably flies again. The toad menace will not be stopped with one victory. The fight will go on. Bucky O'Hare and his crew won't rest until the Anniverse is free. Let's croak toads! What an awesome game, awesome experience, such a part of my childhood. I remember this game fondly as I do with uh, Chippendales, Rescue Rangers for the NES, um, both awesome great games. They tried their best to utilize 8-bit graphics to explore the worlds and to get you immersed in the adventure. Just great, great memories. As a child, wanted to just share this with you. Thank you all very much for playing. Um, very fond memories. A lot of great things, just like my uh, cartoon uploads of Angry Beavers and Ren and Stimpy. You know, um, those are all part of my childhood. I just added commercials, classic commercials to them, and every and everyone seemed to love it. And I love putting them together. Just to kind of bring back a sense of uh, the past to the present and allow the youth to kind of see how it was to watch um, 90s television. But again, as Rich Cispit is, I enjoy putting these games together, I enjoy putting the videos together. Thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe if you want. But continue to watch my tunes and spread the word and share. Thank you all very much. I'm glad to be putting this game together as one part of my memories. This was an awesome um, full gameplay, which I've never done really if I had to break them apart. But this is my first full gameplay and I'm glad that it's an 8-bit classic that I grew up as a child with. Just an awesome experience. <clears throat> and these classic games, I'm so glad that they'll always be around on YouTube. People will always be playing them creating long plays of these games or let's plays of these games, uploads of the videos of them playing it and these games will always exist in cartridge form or for sure in digital data form in computers so we'll always have them as ROMs or as just video recordings as I've just done right now. And you know, I'm getting older, and a few years ago, four years ago, I would say that I really got reconciled with the memories and music, movies, games, um, commercials, shows, all of that from my childhood. And you know, it's good to reminisce and to relive those, but in a way, I can only do that for so long, you know, because um, we all have to move on with our lives. But they'll always be there, and I want you guys to always enjoy them, and to use them, and to talk about them, and discuss them, and get inspired by them, 
and to create things from the ideas of them, not to copy them, but just to get some ideas from them, and just to push the future forward because the past is what perpetuates the future, and that's a fact. But again, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching this full gameplay of Bucky O'Hare from Konami for Nintendo Entertainment System. Look at that beautiful picture. Classic, classic. From the bottom of my heart, it makes my heart just sing. Thank you all for watching. God bless you. Respect the past. And the future will be respected likewise. Thank you all. God bless you and take care.